Hi everyone. So this, great subject, great scale. I've had it for some years now. I did have the Rebel Arado as well, but I got rid of that some time ago. I can't remember why, just did. Look at the contents in the box, it looks pretty good, but that doesn't mean anything. You will need some additional materials to help finish this kit off, but nothing major. If I had the inclination and the time, there were certain areas I would have built from scratch. There were certain areas like the gantry where we had a lot of resin bleed, lots of it. Now thankfully, it's all underneath and you won't really see it unless you tip the thing upside down. The actual sled or cradle that the rider would sit on, once again, for this scale, should have had a bit more finesse in the resin parts. This is one area I would have built from scratch, but that's not what this video is about. It's about building what we get supplied in the box. But as an overall finished model straight from the box, it looks pretty good. And with a bit of effort and a bit of paint, it might even look better. And we can thank HPH Models for bringing out this subject, because I don't think anybody else would. So let's get cracking and let's see what's in the box first. Our instructions, the parts breakdown, Handrolic illustrations. I think, if I'm correct, the brass rod I had to source myself. I don't think you get it with a kit. The resin base, there's two of these. Quite a sturdy bit of resin. Then we've got the top plate for the base. We get a few metal tubes, though ideally I would have preferred these to be in plastic. The other resin base part. We've got a couple of bags of assorted resin pieces. I'm not going to take them out now. You'll see them as the build goes on. And then we've got the framework. And then we get supplied pre-cut mesh. And then the last piece of interest is the actual catapult. And I think I'll start with the gantry bits. First thing I tried to do was to cut out the excess flash. And I thought maybe I could sand it off seeing as it's sitting on a layer of this flash completely. Maybe a light sanding and I could get rid of it all in one go. So I had a go at that, I cut out some foam board as an inlay. So I sat it inside the actual resin piece. This way I thought I'd get an even pressure as I sanded away the excess. But because these parts are so delicate and there's so very little resin, I nearly burnt through the framework. So this process was a no-no. These parts are too delicate. Safest way is to go the long way around. Cut out the flash and then sand the sides smooth. Now for the larger piece, I should be okay. There's a lot more meat to play with here, he says. It doesn't mean I can be complacent. I still need to check quite frequently. Onto the resin sheets now. There's a few of these. First thing I do is cut all the parts out, making sure I leave some excess resin around each part. This is so when I start sanding, with light pressure, gently, not going at it like a rampant rabbit, as soon as the excess starts to break away, I know it's time to stop. So as you can see, it's a messy and it is a time consuming job. I make sure I'm using water all the time. We don't want this stuff drying. So I'll do one sheet at a time. And after I finish each sheet, I shall clean the area thoroughly, the sandpaper, the work surface and the parts. Cleanliness is the key to this process here. Next I'm going to tackle the base because I've been doing a few dry fits and I've got quite a few issues with these parts. The curves or radiuses seem different. They don't seem to match up. Well, that's due to warpage or time, I don't know. But as you can see, they don't fit perfectly. The top resin piece doesn't fit at all. Got all sorts of issues there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out the circle and then replace the top of the base with some plastic card and use it as a template to cut to shape. But before I do that, I'm going to sort out the alignment with these two chunky resin pieces. 
As you can see here, I've drilled holes all around the base. And using some strong robust clippers, I'm just gonna clip this base out. So the thinking is, we've taken that base out and by the time I've cleaned up around the inside of the edge, I've got a bit of give now, a bit of flexibility. So hopefully I can line up this top piece with the bottom piece. So I've messed around with these parts long enough now, I'm gonna to start to glue them together. After a lot of dry fitting, I'm gonna start with one of the best sides. I'll glue and clamp and adjust as I go around. Clamping as I go, hey ho. Now that the whole thing's dry and I've got it near enough, it's not 100%, I want to reinforce the sides using this extruded plastic just to give it some strength internally. So you can see here I've had to shim up in places because of the different thicknesses in resin from the top part. So by adding these I've added strength to this structure. Now I can concentrate on the top. First thing I need to do is remove this excess off here. By scoring around the edge a few times. And then gently break off the excess. So in the cold light of day, um, I noticed quite a few more errors. Um, as I said, I didn't 100% solve uh, the shape issues. I toyed with the idea of sanding all this uh, detail off, filling all the issues, and that way I've got a perfect or reasonably good um, shape. Then I cut out strips of plastic card to replicate the um, partitions here. The only thing that stopped me from doing that with these eyelets. I'd already drilled the holes through, so I'd got the positions marked, but it was how to replicate these eyelets. And I, I couldn't for the life of me think of, of, of how I'd do that. So in the end, I've copped out and uh, I just addressed the biggest issue, which is this uh, radius here. So for the new top, I'm just gonna use some plastic card. I think it's 0.5 mil thick. Place the base over the top, use it as a template, draw around it, and then cut to shape. Next thing I'm gonna do is glue the central disc. I'm gonna use a bit that I cut out as a jig. Once I'm happy that I've got it in position, then I'll tape it down. So I've just got some surface detail to add. And I also need to cut out that hole. So I've started on a large lump of resin, cleaning it up. And you can see I've replaced the detail where I've taken it off. A few air bubbles here and there to fill in, but other than that, nothing major. I ask you next to add these plastic strips to the top. These come supplied, so it's just a matter of trimming to size and gluing on.
Now using the two part resin glue, I'm going to start assembling the piston. I've made sure I've cleaned both surfaces of the metal part and the resin part, just to give the glue a better bond. So the two pulleys here, both front and back, I had all sorts of issues with. I had a part missing, also there's some duff information on the instruction sheet. All I can say in conclusion is that the smaller sleeve goes at the front and the larger one at the back, I think. So a lot of dry fitting is advised here. So I've had to shim up this area with some plastic card just so the pulley wheels run clear of these two slots. So I want to start the gantry next. All the resin parts have been cleaned. And the mesh supplied I've just had to trim slightly just so it sits inside nicely. Now they asked you to attach this part to the base, but I'm going to attach it to the gantry, just to try and give it some more rigidity. So the next thing I'm going to do that I've been putting off is this clothesline, whatever it is, going around the base. There's 32 of these T-shaped connectors. The manufacturer supplies the resin connectors, but the wire, as they call it, you have to supply yourself. I bought a brass rod. So they say the length should be 6mm, I thought that's quite short, so I wasted some time in scanning the base on the computer, drawing around the outline, and then taking that line out 6mm, in fact it's more than 6mm, just to give me some sort of visual aid. To me this looks very narrow. I did one at 10mm, slightly over 10mm, and that looked better. But I'm going to stick with what the manufacturers say, they know a lot more about this than I do. The first thing I've done is cut 32 10 mil pieces. This gives me a couple of mil either end for the plastic resin bit and for the bash rod to at least go into the base just to give it a bit of bite. So now I've got all my brass rods cut, I'm going to start to release these resin connectors. I'll do a row at a time. Now the next thing I've got to do once these are cleaned up, I've got to drill a hole in 32 of these in the center to take the 10 mil brass rod. Now I've got my 32 T-joints ready to go, I can do the outside bar. Because I've blocked the hole with the brass rod, it means I can't do big pieces for the outside rail. This means I'm going to have to do it in segments. So I'm going to start off with the straight sides, and I've cut 16 pieces to length already. Those lengths are taken from the outer circles of the holes, that way I should get no clashes with the T-bar rods. So I'm going to start by adding the three T-joints and inserting them in the hole. Then the fiddly part comes is inserting the two bits of rod. I'm using the edge of steel ruler just to line them up and then I'm adding a blob of super glue at the joints. And before it sets I'll just use the edge of steel ruler again just to make sure they're all in line. One down, seven to go. Now those are all done and dry, I can gently pull these out. Now to make sure I get the right length all the way around, I've created a jig out of plastic card, 6mm in width. And with that guide I can glue all these assemblies into position. Now for the corner bits, I've had to break the outside rail into two parts for the same reason as I did with the straight bits. First thing I did was use a drawing I made and bend the brass rod to that shape. 
One thing to note that all the radiuses on this box are slightly different. Once I was happy with the radius, I split it into two, dry fit the T-piece and dry fit the two pieces either end, and then super glue them in position. I'll do the bottom first and then the top. Oh, one thing I do want to say um, of note was that on the illustration of the instructions, it actually shows this rail tapering upwards. Now I'm going to have enough issues doing this without adding that to the equation. So I'm just going to keep it straight, or if you want, horizontal. So there we go, that wasn't too bad. It's not brilliant, but it worked out better than I'd hoped. One down, one more to go. So I want to try and talk quickly about this. Um, it's a whole video in itself really, and nobody wants that. Um, a lot of the parts don't fit very well and the white parts are the bits I've replaced. Well, these two bits have been replaced for a simple reason, the uh, rod that goes through the resin uh, was poking out. So I tried to create a channel to force it back in, but it just broke. And it's easier, just with some plastic rod, to create your own. These two parts here, you don't get in the kit. You have to source that yourself. And you can't do these until you've got the angles and dangles of these, which is uh, where I'm going with this. They give you some um, measurements. It would have been nice if this was size for size, but really, you really want the angles. I suppose it's not essential if you're not sticking an arado on top of it, but uh, it would have been nice to have um, a plan view of this gubbins here. Top, side, back or front, size for size would have been a tremendous help. So my biggest problem was starting point because of these angles. They not only angle upwards, they angle inwards as well. So starting point, let me get back to that starting point. Um, first thing I did was create a homemade jig. So using a tin of lighter fluid and setting the frame at an angle and then using one of the metal rods from the kit, just hold the angle in place. I glued in my first two braces. Now the angles inward are all by eye, just made up. And the angle going outwards, I used the drawing as best I could. Once these are set, then I've got a solid point to go on now. I've got a datum to work from or work back. And the rest was, uh, was fairly straightforward. He says lying through his teeth. <laughs> so I'm gonna to start to add these cylinders either side. So I'll glue this piece on first. And then I'm going to lay the walkway top down, line it up. Then I can add the two ring brackets and they need to line up with those two little stubby legs sticking out the side. And it's just a matter of feeding the cylinder through and thankfully these brackets hide those horrendous joints. What a blessing. Do the same for the other side, and then I'll attach them both to the catapult. So I'm going to do all the pipe work now. I'm going to start with the big pipes from the cylinders to the piston. I've chose my own route round and ignored the instructions. I'm using metal coated in plastic. It's quite easy to bend. Once I'm happy with the layout and the route, I'll mirror that on the other side. Next, a small outer pipe work. I don't know what this is for, but I'm using one mil plastic rod. You do get some resin brackets for this pipe work. They're strange looking things. So I won't be using them. I'll be using some hollow plastic tubing, cut into slices. They give a very good impression of pipe support brackets. So I was making a start on these gantry rails, there's two of them, one at the back, one at the front, or one either side, depending which way you're looking at it. And thankfully, they actually give you some layout drawings, size for size. Brilliant, 
or so I thought at the time. I was getting all my shapes into place, cut, bent to shape, and it was only by chance that I thought I'll just check and marry it up with a resin piece, and it was only then I found out that it was too small. About 7% too small. So I'm going to have to start again, this time using the resin piece as a guide. Then the resin sleeves supplied with the kit, or knuckle joints, whatever you want to call them, I cut them in half because they were far too long. The top set of knuckles, I drilled one hole, and then the middle rail, I drilled two holes. I fed the top knuckles through on the top rail, and then the top rail upside down, held in place or taped down in place. I then start to glue the vertical brush rods in place. I then got the middle bar, marked off in pencil, where I need to cut, and then end it with three pieces. Just using the steel ruler to make sure everything's plumb. And everything at this moment is just slightly tacked in place. Once I was happy with the whole setup, then I added more super glue to the joints. So I dry fitted the assembly to the resin frame, and I just need to trim back those angles. The second rail has been very easy, well, a lot easier than the uh, first one. So it's just one bit of brass rod bent into shape, four pieces cut to length, laid it on the table here, and now I've just got these two ends to uh, feed in and line up. So I've got my sub-assemblies finished, and I've just gone around with some compressed air and blown any crap or dust that's laying on the surface, ready for my first cut of paint. So I'm going to be using this stuff for two reasons. One, I've got quite a few tins of it lying around, and secondly, this stuff's enamel, so it should cover a multitude of sins. So before your very eyes, I've covered everything in black. I end up using just under two tins, so this is giving me a tough, durable surface now. Now for my primary colour, um, looking at the instructions, it says Battleship Grey. Well, thank you for that, <laughs> that narrows that down. Now I could mix the colour using Tamiya paints, which is what I would usually do, but I'm just worried about the amount of paint I'm going to need to cover these assemblies. So what I've done, I've looked at the Vallejo range and they've got quite a number of greys. They even do a set, I think, for the Kriegsmarine. So I want to err on the side of a light grey. Anything too dark will hide a lot of the detail. So I've gone for these two colours, rightly or wrongly. I'm going to spray them on a test piece, see what they dry like and then pick one of them. So I went for the light blue grey in the end, and I'm quite surprised I've managed to paint all these parts and I've still got quite a bit left in the bottle. I did water it down a lot, and it took quite a few coats, especially to cover that black, but I'm surprised how far this paint went. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to seal everything in with some Vallejo satin varnish. This is brilliant stuff. Well, I think so anyway. Now weathering. Now, looking at the very few black and white photographs that I could find, they seem relatively clean. But I've got to do something with it, can't just leave it like this. So I think the first thing I'll do is add a highlight and then go from there. Mix the light grey oil, take some onto the brush, wipe all the excess off. And I'm just going to concentrate on the lower half of the structure. Just using dabbing motions. Next thing I'm going to do is blend all this in using the cotton wool bud, using downward strokes. Next I've used Mr. Colors Aluminium for the top rails. And then using my circle cutter, I've cut out a paper template so I can do the ring plate on the top of the base. Only a small amount of paints needed to do this, it goes quite a long way. Next I'm using a customised panel wash, created from these two colours here. Now 
Now for the cabling, you've got to source that yourself. They only show you how to thread it through the structure. I'm going to be using this thread. I've cut it into two lengths. Each length I've soaked in some PVA glue, watered down considerably, giving it a couple of coats just to give it some rigidity. Once they're dry, I'll paint them using Vallejo steel. With that dry, I'll just trim the ends off. I've created some plastic sleeves from this rod, painted them aluminium, and I'll feed the thread through and then feed it back on itself to create a loop. So I'm going to feed all this through the structure. and I don't know how it's going to go, whether it's all going to line up, fingers crossed. Thankfully, if it all goes wrong, it's not going to be seen anyway. Use a small amount of super glue to attach the thread to the wheels as I go. Just using a bit of tape to hold the thread in place while I do the other side. So I've trimmed back the thread and I've used the cradle as a guide. I've left enough thread to feed through and adjust whether I want the cable loose or taut, and then the excess will be cut off. So that's all the sub-assemblies finished. Uh, just a quick word about this area here. Uh, they do give you some dials photocopied ones and you can see where I was seriously considering using them so I had a raid of the uh, decal stash a couple of Audi TT dials from a Raval kit uh, some Tornado fuel tank labels and I think that's from a Volkswagen Beetle and also the handle had to be made from uh, scratch as well last thing I did was add a bit of rust mixed uh, my colours there uh, the Citadel colours and yes the blue was used uh, just a few areas and it's very tempting to go overboard so I kept it to a minimum. I don't know if I'm going to take any final photographs, I may just do a walk around with the camera. So I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.